Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with it's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here for checking out the episode. Of course, you know what to do. If you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. And I'm so excited today. Rudy Mancuso is here. The new movie is called Musica out on Prime Video. Hello. How you doing? Hello, I'm great. I'm grand. How are you? I'm well. Uh, I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. It looks incredible. Uh, of course, the music is fun. And the story is, uh, it's a real story, right? This is your life story to a point, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I appreciate the kind words. It uh, It is. It is uh, essentially like a decade of experiences in my life boiled down to, to uh, 90 minutes. <laughs> well, how did it like so we know a little bit your backstory obviously we know your backstory now in the movie but but really leading up to this like at what point did you figure out I have this I ha my life can be a movie and here's how I can get it made well for as long as I could remember I fantasized about exploring this perspective of well a, a unique musical perspective someone who has synesthesia, which is something that I've experienced uh, my entire life. Also, the, the unique cultural perspective, that of a Brazilian American. Those are two things I really wanted to bring to screen um, because I think they're seldomly explored <clears throat> in a cinematic way. Um, and I figured what better way to adapt my own life and my own um, a culmination of my own experiences, because that's a story that only I could tell. Um, and uh, I, I guess being embracing the personal aspect of that story became became the dream. Yeah. And you directed it besides, of course, writing and acting in it. Did you have any foundation there? Because, again, it looks amazing it really does um did i have a foundation from a directorial standpoint yeah like 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 getting a movie on prime that's not nothing right <laughs> for them right. to trust you to also direct this that like that's that's the part of your story i was wondering like did i miss something there like because people go to film school for a long time to make a movie look like this right uh yeah, I didn't I didn't go to film school, but I've been in love with film and music for as long as I can remember. And I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker uh, and I knew I wanted to compose music for my own stories, for my own films. That was always the long term dream. I, I was born professionally on the Internet. I was making content, producing shorts, directing music videos, and I found my footing that way. I I uh, I developed an audience that that um, these little shorts resonated with um and i learned a lot through the very guerrilla style makeshift way of of uh of producing content and in a way filmmaking by the time it came to write the script and adapt this story into a feature i had so many ideas that i had auditioned on the internet over the course of 10 years to pull from um that that this seemed very very possible uh, I fell in love with this, my co-writer, Dan Lagana, um, and his, and his, his, uh, writing style and his brain. And we co-wrote this, this script together and he guided me through that process. I'd never written a script before. Um, and we, we took the pitch out to Amazon almost nearly five years ago now. Um, and you know, there are obstacles and went through development as films do. And fast forward to today, you know, we have we have the product. <laughs> uh, and it's. It, it, I also thought about that, the writing side of it, because I think I was just maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes into the movie. You know, we have the diner scene at the beginning. And I thought, how is this actually written on paper? Because, you know, the editing, I mean, finding the rhythm, I feel like is in the editing, like to a certain degree, like to get the rhythm, you know, that, that would be there. But actually to write that on paper, um. It doesn't seem like it would be in a traditional style, I guess. No, no, certainly not. Um, and I, I think that's that lack of education. I never approached filmmaking 
from an academic perspective. Um, it almost made, it gave me more freedom. It was, it was liberating in a way because there were very little parameters. I didn't know uh, too much about, about um, structuring mm -hmm. a, a page and a scene and then eventually the three acts. So Dan and I kind of tackled the pages together. The diner scene specifically, uh, a lot of what you're seeing is how it read. It would be you know, a, a line of dialogue. And then in the scene direction, it would say, rather than Rudy hears a sound and gets distracted and looks cam you know, looks off camera, it would say, it would be a little bit more poetic. And, and you'd have like, tick, thwip, slash, boom, in, in caps and um, in bold letters with a, 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 a description beside it. It says, a fork hits a skillet uh, or a, a, a plate uh, hits a, a table. So um, it's it's not the easiest read, but it it definitely paints the musical picture. So so rhythm rhythm was such a such a heavy part of how the the set pieces and scenes were described. Um, we normally music is treated separately from from dialogue and story. With this, it was all very heavily interwoven, um, and I shot a version of that diner scene um, to exemplify the style of the film and I used it to pitch the movie. Oh wow. So that was the one. That was the scene right there. That's interesting. Yeah, exactly. And, and so so I would imagine then that you already heard the music and 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 even those moments like before the full story was there. Oh absolutely. Um the process was almost backwards here. Um, most of the music was composed before the script was even finished. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had an idea in my head of how the music would sound and how the compositions would play out in all the major set pieces before we even finished writing the story. Yeah. So wh what can you say about that? Because when you've got to decide on, you know, the, the aural motif of your life and, and, and then there's her song, like, like, how did you, how did you get it pared down to like, how, how did you get to that song? There's one melodic motif that's reoccurring in almost every single set piece uh, of the film. If you listen closely, this specific melody is slowed down and is a little bit um, uh, more melodic in some of the slower moments and romantic moments and is sped up and the time signature changes on some of the more rhythmic moments, but that melody is consistent. Um, so. It was it was about reinterpolating that one motif in a dozen different ways to satisfy all the different set pieces, uh, but it kind of found itself. I had an idea very early on um, on how that melody would sound and how it would sneak in and creep into almost every single musical piece and cue. Yeah, see, I get, yeah, and I guess that's what I'm getting at. It's like to some degree, this song becomes your theme song of your life. Like right. it, you, you, you have to love it <laughs> to a certain degree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. I mean, I, I was excited about the chord progression and that that melody, and that's the beauty of a melody that it can be adapted and twisted and turned and reversed in so many ways that the the listener may not even realize they're hearing the same the same thing. I mean, you know, a good example of that is what Justin Hurwitz did on La La Land. Um, that that main theme that that everyone walked walked away humming was was uh, recurring and disguised in many, that same chord progression was used so many times during that film um that before you knew it you got 10 songs for the price of one in mm -hmm. a way yeah with, with synesthesia you know as we learned throughout this movie um but thinking about it in the terms of like the music that you do put together, the music that you do online with your shorts, you know, on, on, on socials and everything. Do you find that having synesthesia draws you to certain types of music? It's a good question. Um, if it does, I'm not sure what that type is. My, my musical taste is uh, continuously changing. Sure. I, I love film scores. Um, compositions for film uh, and TV specifically. Uh, I love the, the the magnitude of the orchestra. Um, I listen to more scores than I do 
songs and source music. Um, but uh, I, it's a, a very eclectic taste. You know, I love everything from from uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim and Sinatra to Gorillaz and LCD sound system. Uh, but I do find myself listening to film composers like Benjamin Walfish, Rachel Portman, um, Hans Zimmer, uh, of course, John Williams, um, John Debney, um, amongst so many others, more than anything else. And and maybe it is uh, attributed to to the, the synesthetic mind and, and perspective. It, it, I, I, I'm constantly trying to build a story in my head based on the, on the sounds that I hear. So film scores lend themselves naturally to that idea and pursuit really not really easily yeah sure when it's already tied to images in a certain way even if you haven't seen those images exactly, uh, you, exactly you can right fill those there uh, yeah i love that um and i agree I, I listen to a lot of scores around here too uh some of the folks you got to work with in the movie uh jb smooth mm-hmm. fantastic casting i just imagine he's always on that's how it, it's how, how he comes across Pretty much, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, what you see is what you get with with JB. It was a dream to work with him. I'm, I'm a big fan. I love his character on Curb. It's one of my favorite show shows, and his level of improv and his energy is unmatched. We had so much fun. It was the most I've laughed uh, uh, on any set. Yeah, I, I would hope so. You kind of that's what you sign up for with him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you didn't exactly. live up to it. Uh, and, and I'll also say like uh, like the uh, the double date scene. Um, God, I had to walk away. I did. That tension built so hard <laughs> that I just got up and I was like, I don't want to hit pause because I don't I can't feel this right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was certainly the the intention was to to build up a level of tension and anxiety um that uh that was palpable. Um it's loosely inspired by that set piece in Miss Doubtfire, where Robin Williams is uh, switching costumes and bouncing between two tables until eventually the jig is up. Um, right. Uh, yeah, that was a fun one and a complex one to shoot. Yeah. Now, the, and that brings up, I'm sure, the uh, the big question because you do when you preface the movie with true-ish or mostly true, or whatever it is, you know, then it becomes like, well, what is and what's not? Like the double date scene. Did you ever actually get slapped by a fish? Uh, we got we we took a bit of fictional license on the fish slap. No, I never got slapped in the face with a fish. Um, however, I did frequent the that fish market. In fact, the fish market really shot in growing up. Um, my mother went there on a weekly basis uh, and I would accompany her or I would go on her behalf. And I figured what, what's what's the, the least romantic place where Rudy and Isabella can lock eyes for the, for the first time a disgusting fish market. And then the slap in the face is is just a kind of an end button gag. And it's also a figurative idea of like, life is slapping Rudy in the face constantly. Yeah, I love that you got to use so much of the real stuff. I mean, that's your real mom, right? Did, did I understand that? Real mom playing my mom, yep. Yeah, how was she on uh, getting into acting? Cause it looks pretty natural. Yeah, I mean, uh, she's naturally just just uh, fantastic. She's not a trained actor, there's no background there like me, but she has the ability to be your unapologetic self, an authentic self, uh, on and off camera, and that was invaluable to me. So that that chemistry and and um, that conversational back and forth is very real, a little too real. <laughs> I like that. So so the movie, yeah, and and this is this is great. What happens now? Like, what are you what are you working on next? Is it another movie? You're gonna get back to something musical? Yeah, man. Um, there's a few projects out in development. Uh, I want to get back out there. I want to direct the next one. Um, I already have it. Not much I can say about it at sure. this moment, but uh, what I can say is that this next project and pretty much any project I, I'll ever do will have will use music as uh, in some unique way, whether it's a character or or a device. Music will be at the forefront of all these ideas, um, and and particularly the synesthetic version. Of music, there's so much more to explore there. Uh, and music, I got to, I barely scratch the surface of what's possible with uh, with bending the conventions of how music and sound are treated in film. Yeah, well, it is. It's uh, you did something masterful. I really do mean that. I had so much fun oh, watching. Very it. nice. Thank yeah. you. Thank um, you. Uh, congratulations on it, Rudy. Uh, seriously, I mean that. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. Of course, thank you. Thanks for the uh, the interesting and smart questions. 
And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.